Or do ye think that ye shall enter the garden of bliss without such trials as came to those who passed away before you? They encountered suffering and adversity, and were so shaken in spirit that even the messenger and those of faith who were with him cried, When will come the help of God? Ah! Verily, the help of God is always near. They ask thee what they should spend in charity. Say, Whatever ye spend that is good, is for parents and kindred and orphans and those in want and for wayfarers. And whatever ye do that is good, God knoweth it well. Fighting is prescribed for you, and ye dislike it. But it is possible that ye dislike a thing which is good for you, and that ye love a thing which is bad for you. But God knoweth, and ye know not which is which. They ask thee concerning fighting in the prohibited month. Say, fighting therein is a grave offense, but graver is it in the sight of God to prevent access to the way of God, to deny Him, to prevent access to the holy temple, and drive out its members. Tumult and oppression are worse than slaughter. Nor will they cease fighting you until they turn you back from your faith if they can. And if any of you turn back from their faith and die in unbelief, their works will bear no fruit in this life, and in the hereafter they will be companions of the fire, and will abide therein. Those who believed and those who suffered exile and fought and strove and struggled in the way of God, they have the hope of the mercy of God, and God is oft forgiving, most merciful. They ask thee concerning wine and gambling. Say, in them is great sin, and some profit, for men, but the sin is greater than the profit. They ask thee how much they are to spend, in charity. Say, what is surplus to your needs, thus doth God make clear to you his signs, in order that ye may consider, their bearings, on this life and the hereafter. They ask thee concerning orphans. Say, the best thing to do is what is for their good, if ye mix their affairs with yours, they are your brethren, but God knows the man who means mischief from the man who means good. And if God had wished, he could have put you into difficulties. He is indeed exalted in power, wise, do not marry unbelieving women idolaters, until they believe. A slave woman who believes is better than an unbelieving woman, even though she allures you nor marry your girls to unbelievers until they believe, a man-slave who believes is better than an unbeliever, even though he allures you. Unbelievers do only beckon you to the fire. But God beckons by His grace to the garden of bliss and forgiveness, and makes His signs clear to mankind, that they may celebrate His praise. They ask thee concerning women's courses. Say, they are a hurt and a pollution. So keep away from women in their courses, and do not approach them until they are clean. But when they have purified themselves, ye may approach them in any manner, time, or place ordained for you by God. For God loves those who turn to him constantly and he loves those who keep themselves pure and clean. Your wives are as a tilth unto you, so approach your tilth when or how ye will, but do some good act for your souls beforehand, and fear God, and know that ye are to meet him in the hereafter, and give these good tidings to those who believe. And make not God's name an excuse in your oaths against doing good, or acting rightly, or making peace between persons, for God is one who heareth and knoweth all things. God will not call you to account for thoughtlessness in your oaths, but for the intention in your hearts, and he is oft forgiving, most forbearing. For those who take an oath for abstention from their wives, awaiting for four months is ordained, if then they return, God is oft forgiving, most merciful. But if their intention is firm for divorce, God heareth and knoweth all things. Divorced women shall wait concerning themselves for three monthly periods. Nor is it lawful for them to hide what God hath created in their wombs, if they have faith in God and the last day. And their husbands have the better right to take them back in that period, if they wish for reconciliation. And women shall have rights similar to the rights against them, according to what is equitable, but men have a degree of advantage over them. And God is exalted in power, and in wisdom. 
A divorce is only permissible twice, after that, the parties should either hold together on equitable terms, or separate with kindness. It is not lawful for you, men, to take back any of your gifts from your wives, except when both parties fear that they would be unable to keep the limits ordained by God. If ye judges do indeed fear that they would be unable to keep the limits ordained by God, there is no blame on either of them if she gives something for her freedom. These are the limits ordained by God, so do not transgress them. If any do transgress the limits ordained by God, such persons wrong themselves as well as others. So if a husband divorces his wife irrevocably, he cannot, after that, remarry her until after she has married another husband and he has divorced her. In that case there is no blame on either of them if they reunite, provided they feel that they can keep the limits ordained by God. Such are the limits ordained by God, which he makes plain to those who understand. When ye divorce women, and they fulfill the term of their abstinence from sexual relations it it, either take them back on equitable terms or set them free on equitable terms but do not take them back to injure them, or to take undue advantage if any one does that he wrongs his own soul. Do not treat God's signs as a jest, but solemnly rehearse God's favors on you, and the fact that he sent down to you the book and wisdom, for your instruction and fear God, and know that God is well acquainted with all things. When ye divorce women, and they fulfill the term of their abstinence from sexual relations it it, do not prevent them from marrying their former husbands, if they mutually agree on equitable terms. This instruction is for all amongst you, who believe God and in the last day. That is the course making for most virtue and purity amongst you and God knows, and ye know not. The mothers shall give suck to their offspring for two whole years, if the father desires to complete the term. But he shall bear the cost of their food and clothing on equitable terms. No soul shall have a burden laid on it greater than it can bear. No mother shall be treated unfairly on account of her child nor father on account of his child, an heir shall be chargeable in the same way. If they both decide on weaning, by mutual consent, and after due consultation, there is no blame on them. If ye decide on a foster mother for your offspring, there is no blame on you, provided ye pay the mother what ye offered, on equitable terms. But fear God and know that God sees well what ye do. If any of you die and leave widows behind, they shall wait concerning themselves four months and ten days, when they have fulfilled their term, there is no blame on you if they dispose of themselves in a just and reasonable manner. And God is well acquainted with what ye do. There is no blame on you if ye make an offer of betrothal or hold it in your hearts. God knows that ye cherish them in your hearts, but do not make a secret contract with them except in terms honorable, nor resolve on the tie of marriage till the term prescribed is fulfilled. And know that God knoweth what is in your hearts, and take heed of him, and know that God is oft forgiving, most forbearing. There is no blame on you if ye divorce women before consummation or the fixation of their dower, but bestow on them a suitable gift, the wealthy according to his means, and the poor according to his means, a gift of a reasonable amount is due from those who wish to do the right thing. And if ye divorce them before consummation, but after the fixation of a dower for them, then the half of the dower is due to them, unless they remit it or the man's half is remitted by him in whose hands is the marriage tie, and the remission of the man's half is the nearest to righteousness. And do not forget open-handedness between yourselves. For God sees well all that ye do. Guard strictly your habit of prayers, especially the middle prayer and stand before God in a devout frame of mind. If ye fear an enemy, pray on foot, or riding, as may be most convenient, but when ye are in security, celebrate God's praises in the manner he has taught you, which ye knew not before. 
Those of you who die and leave widows should bequeath for their widows a year's maintenance and residence, but if they leave the residence, there is no blame on you for what they do with themselves, provided it is reasonable. And God is exalted in power, and in wisdom. For divorced women maintenance should be provided on a reasonable scale. This is a duty on the righteous. Thus doth God make clear his signs to you, in order that ye may understand. Didst thou not turn by vision to those who abandoned their homes, though they were thousands in number, for fear of death? God said to them, Die, then he restored them to life. For God is full of bounty to mankind, but most of them are ungrateful. Then fight in the cause of God, and know that God heareth and knoweth all things. Who is he that will loan to God a beautiful loan, which God will double unto his credit and multiply many times? It is God that giveth you want or plenty, and to him shall be your return. Hast thou not turned thy vision to the chiefs of the children of Israel after the time of Moses? They said to a prophet that was among them, Appoint for us a king, that we may fight in the cause of God. He said, is it not possible, if ye were commanded to fight, that that ye will not fight? They said, How could we refuse to fight in the cause of God, seeing that we were turned out of our homes and our families? But when they were commanded to fight, they turned back, except a small band among them. But God has full knowledge of those who do wrong. Their prophet said to them, God hath appointed to loot Saul as king over you. They said, How can he exercise authority over us when we are better fitted than he to exercise authority, and he is not even gifted, with wealth and abundance? He said, God hath chosen him above you, and hath gifted him abundantly with knowledge and bodily prowess. God granteth his authority to whom he pleaseth. God careth for all, and he knoweth all things. And further, their prophet said to them, a sign of his authority is that there shall come to you the Ark of the Covenant, with an assurance therein of security from your Lord, and the relics left by the family of Moses and the family of Aaron, carried by angels. In this is a symbol for you if ye indeed have faith. When Talut Saul set forth with the armies, he said, God will test you at the stream, if any drinks of its water, he goes not with my army, only those who taste not of it go with me, a mere sip out of the hand is excused. But they all, except a few, drank of it. When they crossed the river, he and the faithful ones with him, they said, This day we cannot cope with Goliath and his forces. But those who were convinced that they must meet God, said, how oft, by God's will, hath a small force vanquished a big one? God is with those who steadfastly persevere. When they advanced to meet Goliath and his forces, they prayed, Our Lord, pour out constancy on us and make our steps firm. Help us against those that reject faith, by God's will they routed them, and David slew Goliath, and God gave him power and wisdom and taught him whatever else. He willed. And if God did not stop one set of people by means of another, the earth would indeed be full of mischief, but God is full of bounty to all the worlds. These are the signs of God. We rehearse them to thee in truth, verily thou art one of the apostles' messengers. Those apostles we endowed with gifts, some above others. To one of them God spoke, others he raised to degrees of honor, to Jesus the Son of Mary we gave clear signs, and reinforced him with the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Christ. If God had so willed, succeeding generations would not have fought among each other, after clear signs had come to them, but they chose to wrangle, some believing and others rejecting. If God had so willed, they would not have fought each other, but God fulfilleth his plan. O ye who believe, spend out of the bounties. We have provided for you, before the day comes when no bargaining will avail, nor friendship nor intercession. Those who reject faith, they are the wrongdoers.